how to make shoes with my step-by-step -step video courses. Today's video will be something different from what I made before. Today we'll have an interview with one of my students. She was a total beginner like you and right now she became real shoemaker and designer that launched her own shoe line and recently she attended a shoe show in London. And I think it will be very interesting for you to know her story, how she started from zero, from knowing nothing about shoemaking and became shoemaker, real shoemaker and designer who has now her own shoe line. It will be a new experience for me too. And as you know, I am not native English speaker, so forgive me for any mistakes I will do. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button to be notified when my new video will come up. So let's start the interview. Today we will have a very interesting conversation with one of my students, Marcia Brown. Uh, she is now become real shoemaker and designer and make, uh, she has now shoe line and recently she attended a show in London. And I want to talk all, uh, about all this journey in shoemaking, how his, she started and what happened uh, after she already got the experience in shoemaking. Okay, so today will be a very interesting interview with Marcia Brown. Hello, Marcia again. I'm Hello. very happy. I'm very happy to see you, and uh, I want to know how you have started shoemaking. Do you ha do you have any experience, any background before you started learning shoemaking? Before I started learning shoemaking, I was actually a cake baker. So cake baker, um, I started making cakes. I understood. So that means that actually you didn't have any background in real shoemaking. You didn't know how classic. to... Cla classic shoemaking. You didn't know how to sew, how to cut, nothing. That's yeah? right. No. Okay. Yeah. So how, how it was for you? How you have this courage to change your life, to change your craft? Well, to tell you the truth, going on a linear apple, which, which, which is a, um, uh, um, they sell leather, they sell um, components, um, anything to do with leather, they sell, mm -hmm. um, and especially service the shoemaking market. So I actually went off to this course, and sorry, to this um, event, and once I went to this event, well then, my life changed. When you started to, to make to make real shoes, when, when you started to learn shoe making, what was the most difficult thing, um, step, process for you in shoe making and, and, and how you overcome it? So what is the most difficult thing? Because you know, I have many students uh, that just started learning shoe making or in already uh, have some experience and they Many of them have different difficulties. They already uh, bought tools, but never started because they have some uh, some fear of uh, doing mistakes. You know. So, what is what is what was your uh, most difficult thing? Okay, so I actually started um, watching your videos, um, and I watched them for some time. Then I decided to get going. Um, then I, I actually did have a fear because I'm thinking, oh my God, where do I start? So then I thought to myself, well, you've actually got a program that you actually say, if you follow this program, then it will help you um, to get started and learn the right skills, be able to go on to the next step. So that's what I did. Um, so I actually it's didn't excellent. find it. Yeah, I didn't find it hard. It was super easy following those skills because the thing is, is that you have to learn the easy bits first, the easy bits first, before you can go on to the hard bits or to the bits that you don't understand. And for me, any areas that I didn't understand, what I did was, I'm telling you something, I watched your videos, I reversed, I watched it again, I reversed, I watched it again, 
it wasn't like I could just pick up the phone and ring you or send you an email. That to me, that was just too long. So in the end, I just kept watching the videos, watching the videos until I got it, and until I actually went wrong. And then I, I had to do it again, went wrong, I had to do it again until I got it right. That's how I actually learned. There is so, the thing is, is that with your videos, you give so many different possibilities. You know, the sum, <laughs> if you actually follow your pattern and the way you're doing them videos, the sum of the videos that's not needed, however, it is very important because it's actually showing you a different way, a different way, a different way, a different way. Oh, so you have choices of learning to make views and so on. Um, so I actually followed every single step of your videos. I'm very happy to hear you because, you know, this is how it must be, you know. This is actually how I learned shoemaking when I started 20 years ago. I had this passion for shoemaking and I had many ideas and I really didn't know how to make this. So step by step I started from simple shoes. And when I was in Italy, I learned shoemaking in Italy. So I started from simple one and then moved on step by step, you know. And it's, you know, you said correctly, it's required a lot of uh, experience. You, when you try things, you do mistakes, but during making these mistakes, you really understand by yourself where yes, you need yeah. to correct them. When you learn something, and we're talking about making, when you repeat certain things, and this is how you learn more and understand better. It was an experience, I'm telling you that, um, but I'm glad I went through it because, you know, I just can't believe the end result and what I've achieved. And, you know, you know, in your classes, you repeat, repeat, repeat. There's no point making mock-ups or making prototypes or even thinking of going to the manufacturer to do prototypes for you. Because they'll do the prototype and they get it back and it's not even doesn't even look like how you want it. The thing is, is when you actually make up the uh, prototype yourself, you can chop, you can change, you can do anything. You can take as long as you want to do it. You can. There's lots of different variations and possibilities how you can do your prototypes. What can you imagine putting that a manufacturer to do? I'm like, this would be an absolute nightmare. Yeah. I wouldn't even be here today, I'd probably be still with the manufacturer, still getting them to do the prototype and it's costed lots and lots of money. Yeah, I know, this is exactly what happened with me, you know. When I already had this experience, I know how to do and I, I had this courage to make my own line. I thought maybe someone will make for me, maybe they will do it better. And I realized yeah. that it cost a lot of money, tons of money, all these prototypes, all these experiences with shoe soles. And, and, and I realized that I needed to do it by myself, <laughs> finally, because yeah. certain things, uh, they even didn't know how to, to do that, you know. So, yeah. and I, now I'm very curious, curious to see your first shoe. That you, do you have it close to you or not? The first shoe that you made? To show the people the difference, the big difference between first pair and last one. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is one of the flats. Yeah. Um, uh, flat shoes. Um, I see. It, I yeah. See. Yeah. And now so we've got the. Same. Yeah, and now we behind you we see the shoes that you are making right now. There is a big so, difference between the first one and yeah. yeah. This is a, this is <clears throat> this is um, the pointy toe. Mm -hmm. so remember that you actually go on one of your crosses, go on to do the pointy toe yeah. in the program. So this is I did actually well with this one. Yeah. And then this is the heel to match. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So this is quite yeah. something. Yeah. Did you know from the beginning that you gonna launch your own shoe line or did it come up during your learning? Okay, so I had no idea that I would be launching a, a shoe line. <laughs> no idea whatsoever. Um, once I actually um, finished doing a few of your courses, 
um, I became quite confident and thought, right, okay, what do I do next? What I did, I actually went and got a mentor. Um, I have had a few mentors, um, but then I decided to get a shoe mentor just to kind of help point me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, the shoe mentor just put me through a, a few exercises and then we decided what level um, I would be making these shoes at and what I'd be selling them at or what I should class myself as, what kind of shoemaker should I class myself um, as. Um, once we did that, um, I then kind of stopped and then went on to just experience making other type of shoes. But I think before I experienced other type of shoes, I think you then bought out the course to learn to make sneakers. Yeah. You know yeah. Yeah, it's one of the latest courses I had yeah. in the program. Yeah. Yeah. So I was asked to make a sneaker for um, a colleague. I made the sneaker, but I couldn't kind of get it right. And then you came out with the sneaker course. So then that helped me a lot. So then I actually decided to gravitate towards making sneakers because as, as you can see, I've made high shoes, I've made flat shoes, I've made quite a few different style of shoes by now, but I actually enjoy making the sneakers. During your course, you keep mentioning you can take a last and you can use this last to make any type of shoes. Yeah. So I kept remember, remembering you saying this. So what I did, a shoe last. This is one of my shoe lasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I created a pattern, a sneaker pattern. So, yeah, so I created the sneaker pattern. So, you know, you say you could, you, you we start off with the basic pattern. Yeah. Once you start off with the basic pattern, you can use that basic pattern to create anything. Yeah, you're yeah? correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this the is the secret, <laughs> the tiny yeah. and big secret of shoemaking. Yeah, that basic pattern. So I go back to my, I think, oh, I've got all these basic patterns. Let's see what I can do with it. So I took the basic pattern, recopied it, and then added the sneaker pattern to my basic shoe pattern. And then from there on, this is the very first shoe I actually created. Wow, oh, it's beautiful. This is yeah. this is the fabric in in the middle, or this is a leather, leather with some pattern. Okay, so this is actually cork ah. with embroidery. Mm -hmm. I actually got this from Italy, from the Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I actually saw this at Lignapole, so I managed to pick this up, and then I actually um, got this from another supplier, which is kind of a suede effect. Yeah. So it's kind of a suede effect print on lamb. Mm -hmm. um, actually, <clears throat> sewing that together was not an easy process because as you can imagine with the embroidery, you've got a lot of frayed edges. Yes. So through your courses and watching all the possibilities and bits and pieces and stuff, I remembered how you showed us how to not exactly manage frayed, ed frayed edges, but, you know, I watched every single thing that you did and because of picking up skills, I was able to manage all the frayed edges and sew, sew this um, shoe rather neatly. Yeah, I, I want to see it again, please. Can you? Yeah, I want to see the back of it. Yeah. Cool. Beautiful sneakers. Yeah. And this this particular sneaker is actually one of the most popular ones. Most men and women actually love this sneaker. With your course, the fantastic thing is, is that I didn't know what direction I was going in in, in terms of making shoes for the ordinary person. But because I've got bunions um, and I've got shoe lasts for myself, rather than getting a model yeah. and asking the model to model my shoes. I thought this is just going to be really expensive. So I started buying um, lasts for myself. I've got bunions, which meant obviously I had to get bigger size feet. 
And then it so happens now that I've gravitated into making shoes now for people who have got challenging feet. So, um, so you you uh, you produce from the beginning shoe last with a, a little big volume on the joints, yeah. Yes, because what I did was um, I went to you know Northampton, shoe uh, Springline. So yeah. in mm -hmm. in the UK we have a manufacturer mm -hmm. who man manufactures um, lasts um, in Northampton called Springline. So I actually had a meeting with them, went and spoke to them about mm -hmm. myself and about my shoes and stuff, and they showed me how to measure feet and yeah. so on. So that's where I got my experience from there, um, like a face-to-face -face type of situation. Yeah. Um, so as a result, then I actually knew how to manage one or two other people with long feet, big feet, one feet bigger than the other, because yeah. I, I actually work in the support industry, uh, sorry, in the, I'm a support worker, yeah. um, in my down, not I shouldn't say my downtime, but in between making shit and other things, I'm a support worker as well, so I meet um, lots of different people with lots of challenges, um, and so yeah, because of experience in our experiences in all different directions, it turns out that I'm able to make shoes for people who have challenging feet. Um, what I say to people is, you know, if if your if your um, your feet challenges are very serious, then I can't go down that route with you. I can give you advice and so on. You can come back to me with measurements from the professionals, yeah. and we can take it, we can take it from there. But yeah, you found your way to make beautiful, comfortable shoes that looks good, real, fashionable shoes. Am, am I right? Well, I think, yeah. I, I mean, I'm meeting a lot of people, and the people that I'm meeting, you know, are just wanting fashionable shoes. I'm, I'm meeting more, let's say, people who do not have challenging feet than people who have challenging mm -hmm. feet. And, and most of them are like, <laughs> How does it look like so I'm, I'm going to be servicing a lot of people? This is another one of, mm -hmm. you know, a person with challenging feet would absolutely love this. Wow. But it I, looks I've it got, looks great. You know, I like the combination that you did here, different yeah. uh, colors and the pattern. How you divided the entire pattern on, on these three parts and yeah. beautiful. The category of people that's really lacking this is again the men. Mm, men. Yeah, this is this is actually I made this this is I made this style as a woman's yeah. uh, shoe for a woman, but it's now turning out to be unisex because I've got more men liking this than the woman. This okay, is the so. the types of shoes that you are focused now. But what uh, your plans uh, with your shoe business for the future? Do you have big well, plans? Better, I'm going to tell you the truth, right? This situation with making these shoes has gone so fast, I haven't even had time to think. I'm like, what is going on? I mean, I've done this show, I've finished this show, and I'm thinking, okay, what next? But between the show on Saturday and today, a lot has happened. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people, and I'm like, okay, what's... So basically, I can tell you this, that's what's going to happen. There's a big demand, um, a big market out there for luxury, mm -hmm. high end, so this, this is um, a man's style, more or less, yeah. so there's a big a big demand for luxury, high end, um, so basically I now have to think of or um, discuss with professionals how to scale the business, how to... Um, start marketing it at a much higher level. Um, I actually met somebody who said, you know, your work is really, really good to the point. I need to say this to you, that there are companies out there that do not have a good business, but they are doing massively, massively well. I need to say to you that this is so good that it can do very well. However, if you keep it to yourself, you are being selfish. It would be big transition transition between 
be a shoemaker who makes shoes for friends, maybe for some close people, and then suddenly you need to think about big production. You know, it's yeah, yeah, big production. I've got to go and buy someone who can actually manufacture these shoes because there's no way I can. See yeah, it. it's too. I didn't realize I was making so many prototypes, number one, because I did all this for this show on Saturday. Yeah. Within about two months, I made all these shoes. And now, as a result, I've got all these shoes that actually can go to market straight away. I know it from ex ex my experience that the key here is to know when you start making b big business, it's very important to know how to make prototypes. You should understand all these techniques because, because sometimes you even need to guide a manufacturer how you want that your shoes will look at the end. I had many students that asked me how to start, what to do. They also wanted to make it their own business. And when you know the techniques, when you know how to make prototypes, believe me, it will be much easier for you to start your own business and you are uh, you proved it by your experience i have to agree with you better right because when i take this shoe to a manufacturer and it, i can tell him exactly how i want the shoe to go and he cannot tell me any different unless he wants to cut costs yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless he wants to well we can't do this because I'm saying, it don't matter, I've got every single component that I need to make this shoe. I'll Great. just send it to you. Great. So, uh, what, what can you recommend to anyone that wants to make shoes, but can't find uh, the courage to make this first step? What you will recommend for all these people, all these lovers of shoe making? Oh. Okay, so for most people, and like for myself, when you look at a shoe, you'll say, how the heck am I going to make this shoe? It looks so daunting because there's the sewing, there's the putting it together, there's the making the pattern, there's all kind of different ways of putting the shoe together. But the thing is, is that if you don't start, you've got to start from somewhere, no matter what it's going to look like, no matter if it's going to go wrong, don't worry about that. Because the thing is, is that in your mind, your mind is not going to let you go any further if you don't even pick up the material, look at the material, cut the material, make a pattern. You must start. Once you start, then it does a, uh, an effect where, you, right, okay, I've done that. Then it, you can do the next step. Then you can do the next step. If you get to a step and you can't do it, then you go back again and you just... Carry on practicing at what you can do. Once you practice on what you can do, in the meantime, your mind will be able to cope with the next step. That's how I found and that's how I worked. I even, I remember went into um, a doctor's surgery and um, I was listening to the lady at reception talking to this woman over the phone and the woman said, I know you're overwhelmed but just start. I know you're overwhelmed, but just start. If you do something, then it will help you to go to the next step. And because she said that to the lady in reception, remember this is a doctor's surgery, it helped me massively. Because I was just like, I'd be at home and I'd just be staring at this, staring at that, staring at I spend a lot of time thinking. Now I don't think anymore. I just do it. Great. Just Great. do it. Because it, the only way you're going to get to that next step is if you've done the first step. Yeah. And this is actually the hardest thing to do the first step. To do the first step. Go through it. Overcome your fears. Just, yeah. just, just shut your brain and yeah. start doing. <laughs> yeah. If you stop, if you stop and you're just thinking, thinking, okay, how can I do that? It don't matter. Just pull away, watch a TV program, go for a walk, come back, and then your mind might be a bit more, you know, entertaining to what you were thinking about, or go to sleep, have a good rest, you get up, and then all of a sudden you know what to do. Like you said, just do it. Just do it, guys. <laughs> just, just do it. I, I have to think myself, 
why? If I never did this, how the heck would I have got to this stage? Sometimes yeah. you've got a, you've got a, you've got, how can I put, you've actually got a metal wall that just comes right down in front of you. And this metal wall, it's like, how, the, how am I going to get through this? But you know what? Somebody said to me, Miss Brown, can you just find a way? Find a way. There's a way to get through. Just find it. And like, so I remember those words. Find mm -hmm. a way. Always find a way. There's a way through. Traditionally, people think that you must have a teacher always near you to learn uh, this craft. And this is actually how I learned many, many minutes ago. But for someone that took, took my online making course, do you think now that learning from a good teacher online is the way or nothing can change this? Well, first of all, I'm going to say it's better. People have different ways of receiving information. So for some people, they do need a classroom environment. They do need to be around people. I'm saying this from experience because I used to be a manager before, but for years before I actually fell into the cake making. Um, and yeah, people's minds work very much differently. Um, for me, I actually like my own company. I like my own space. I like, I don't like being around people um, when I'm on my own. So um, accessing your classes was absolutely perfect for me. Um, it was perfect in the sense that I can sit down and I can take as much time as I want to learn to make these shoes. So for me, I actually enjoyed the experience of learning online. And for some people, they, it might be a good way for them to go, but then people then they say, oh no, I need to go to a classroom environment. But it works. It worked. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Yeah, you can see your shoes and it's unbelievable, you know, how, what a great journey you had. Yeah. I, from, I mean, I, from nothing, no but shoemaking and to become a real shoemaker, to become a designer. Yeah. All, these shoes, all the shoes that you have behind you, you designed them, correct? You, yeah. Yeah. You exactly. had this idea, you made the prototype, so all, everything that we can see right now, yeah, you did it, this. It, with the help of your course, because you did say, okay, you can take a shoe last and you can make it into a different shoe. So I thought, oh, well, let me take the shoe last and make it into a smart shoe then. And it worked. Absolutely fantastic. I, I must say that I did actually, so I have actually gone on to do other courses so once I did these sneakers, then I went on to do a, a, a Air Max One course. And to tell you the truth, I was quite excited to be sat around other people. Um, um, so that the experience of being around other people, but I fell behind because I could not cope with being around. It was fantastic, I enjoyed it and everything. But, it, but to me, I learned skills there because I was in a classroom and there's one or two things that I need. It was a great area, let's just say it was a great area. And the guys really did help me absolutely fantastically well. But ultimately, I actually prefer online. For me, it's definitely online because I can go at my own pace. Yeah, yeah. This is, on, this is what's my goal. You know, this is, was re really my goal to to create this kind of courses about shoemaking where person who likes it, who have a passion, who can proceed with the process, can actually learn by its by his own all these techniques, different techniques, pattern making, technique shoemaking, etc. Okay, so can you, can you please uh, show us again the shoes that you made that this, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Yeah. So this one, I really like. Yeah, the, so the, this, this is the yellow, this is uh, leather or something, uh, different material? 
you know, so all all of the materials that I'm using is lamp, mm -hmm. and the, it's basically a print on lamp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the this is horse hair, and I think they're using goat. Mm -hmm. So it's horse hair. Or, or I'm not quite sure how they do it, but it's actually yeah uh, effective on the goat. The, yeah. It's kind of print they they made on the goat skin. Yeah, yeah. And then I've used inside. Um, I've used. I don't know if you. Yeah, you can see inside. I've used yeah. lamb napper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Lamb napper to do the lining. Yeah. So the standard of the materials that I'm using are very high. High. Yeah. Yeah, I've used vegetable tan leather wow. for the inside. I don't agree with using, I mean, you can use the board. But um, then what I did is I lined it with sponge. Mm -hmm. So it's lined inside. I actually um, enforce it because you, you actually enforce it for um, your leathers, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, you teach us how to enforce. So yeah. I actually enforce all the all yeah. leathers. Yeah. So once I've done the pattern, thrown it together, I enforce it. Um, then it once it goes to lasting, then um, I add the back stiffener, then I add the front stiffener, and then I actually add the, the sponge. I know it's not called sponge, but yeah. Yeah, form, is, some kind of form. Form, form yeah. yeah. Uh, five millimeters yeah. thick. I actually had that, and then I close the lasting. Okay, so you have so, really high-end sneakers with all this natural material. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the feet will be thankful <laughs> for yeah. all this. Basically, I made my sister a pair and my sister wears those everywhere. She, says, she said um, they're just so comfortable, she loves them. So she wears those everywhere. So yeah, so again, so I'm, uh, I, I love colour, I love... I love the way I actually designed this, mm -hmm. especially because I can actually do a lot with it. I actually want to make this into mid-top sneakers. Mm -hmm. yeah. and top sneakers. I actually want to make um, slim backs. Yeah. So, so now you can, this particular style I've done, you can do so much with it. Yeah. This um, is actually the freedom that you have when you, when you know how, how to work. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, wow, this, you know, this is just amazing. I haven't even gone on to my next plan yet. Uh, it's just going to take me a while. So, um, so the men, so basically that design, I actually got a shoe, mm -hmm. a man's shoe last. Yeah. So I've got a man's shoe last and just used kind of the same pattern design. Yeah, different colors. Yeah, and just um, use different colorways and... The men actually love this. Yeah. Yeah. Cam is cameo cameo effect. And Great. then I'm using. I don't know if you've heard of Vibram Soul. Mhm. Mm so you you buy the Vibram. Okay. Yeah, but they buy the Vibram Souls. I've got lots of different variations of this Vibram Soul I can use. This is the blue version. Mhm. Mm um, yeah, so again, we've got different grip. Mhm. Mm so I'm using the EVA, so I'm using, you know the EVA? Yeah, EVA, yeah. yeah. I'm using the EVA especially because it means that, that my possibilities of making shoes for people with challenging feet is like massive. Yeah, because you, from working with this material, you can cut any shape, you can make different types of, uh, I don't know, height, low, higher, whatever. You you, you do so don't much. depend on supplies on shoe so that must be you know this uh, yeah, uh, soles so. raisin soles they must be uh, they must fit exactly the shape of the shoeless so you need to buy shoeless together with the soles and when you That's work with uh, this material if Eva how you pronounce it Eva because I, I pronounce I Eva. Yeah, I just call it EVA. EVA, okay, EVA, whatever. You can, you have this freedom to create really unlimited designs of souls. Yeah, absolutely. I've, um, 
So this one, so this is just one where I've not added mm -hmm. so because I yeah. wanted to actually show people that once I use a vegetable can, mm -hmm. then I'm using cork. Yeah. I'm using cork, then the EBA's added, mm -hmm. then the grits added. So you've got you've got one, two, three, four layers. Yeah. Solid alone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it gives extra comfort because you don't feel any any um, bumps of the ground because all these layers. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Okay, Marcia, um, I will be following your progress, and I wish you a lot of success. I'm really proud of what you did. I'm really proud that you are my student. <laughs> You have this amazing story. Thank you again. Thank you for this wonderful interview. I yeah. was very glad to see you, to see your shoes, to see again the first one and now to see the amazing sneakers that are very comfortable, beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and Sveta, I just have to say, I thank you so much for um, being a wonderful teacher and for actually making these online classes. Um, I've spent hours and hours watching you and I've said to myself, this lady, right, she's got so much technical ability. If she's one millimetre out, when I talk about you, I say to people, this lady, now you know she's one millimetre out or two millimetre out, she'll stop the video and she'll go back and she'll go back and she'll go... And I have to sit there and I have to just watch how she's correcting two millimetres and redrawing and redrawing. And I'm like saying, but this is fantastic because it just shows the passion that you have to get it right, the passion that you have to show people how to even get through this and just produce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really, thank you. I have yeah. this passion and I really happy to be with people who have the same passion. Yeah. Thank so you. Basically, anybody making shoes right have got to be, to do your videos, they've got to be like you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. And no see you. <laughs> ah, what? You will speak again very soon. Yeah, yeah. I will I will be following your progress and if you have any question, you want to know something, I'm yes. here for you. Yes, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too as well. Bye. Bye. Bye.